uh, Wayne and Orson, I work at CERN, and uh, today I wanted to uh, present you a feature we recently developed, uh, that is integration of a spice simulation uh, engine into uh, KiCad. I'll start with a quick agenda. So first I will give you a bit of background, what were our goals and what features uh, we currently support. Uh, then a bit of technical details, how we did that, uh, followed by a to-do list and then a live demo. Hopefully it will work. So, how did we start with, uh, where, do, where does the idea come from? So it was essentially a quick hack that turned into a useful feature. Sometime last summer we accidentally discovered that ng-spice can be built as a DLL. It was actually some Python guy who made a very nice uh, API and turned ng-spice simulator into a shared library uh, for the purpose of uh, processing signals within a Python-based uh, framework. But uh, we thought, well, this is an easy way of integrating a simulator into a, a CAD application. And our aim was, well, why don't we try making something that looks and feels a bit like the, well, non-free but industry standard LT spice, but in KiCad. So, our goals were to have a simulator integrated into the Schema, which is, well, the fancy name for the KiCad schematic editor that is compatible with Spice models, that uh, is reasonably easy to use, so well, ideally one click to run a simulation and uh, that in the longer run allows for the choice of the simulation kernel. Currently we support only ng-spice, but this uh, will likely change in the future. So, what do we support so far? Uh, we can run operating point, uh, AC and uh, transient analysis. Uh, we have our own built-in plot plotting application. We also uh, support uh, live voltage and current probing. So once the simulation is running, you can basically click onto a component or a, uh, or a wire on the schematic to automatically update the plot with the corresponding uh, uh, signal uh, value. Think of it as a, of a virtual scope probe. And uh, another nice feature is that we can adjust the values of the RCL components in the real time. And this lets you observe as the operation of the circuit changes when uh, live. So, how did we implement it? Uh, basically, the simulator is a separate uh, KiCad application that is linked together with the schematic editor. So we have uh, two editor frames, the schematic frame and uh, an associated uh, simulator that, uh, frame that runs in a, in a separate window. And then they both use an abstract uh, class called uh, Spice Simulator, which provides an abstract API that is uh, that is uh, simulation kernel independent, provided that the simulation kernel supports a SPICE compatible netlist. Then we specialize that class, for instance here, to ng-spice, and then we use libngspice.so or ngspice.dll, the dynamic library, uh, using its native API. This way we can provide as many backends as we want, right? So, what is on our to-do list. It's still an experimental feature and it lacks uh, a lot compared to Cooks, for instance. Uh, so we would like to, have to add more analysis types, for instance, transfer functions, uh, noise analysis. The plotting app is a bit quirky for the moment, so it deserves uh, a bit of user interface fixes. Uh, we'd also like to, to, to have uh, storage of the simulation sessions in, uh, in files. Uh, we need to work on the printing and PDF export. And, uh, well, one ambitious feature that we don't know if it will ever happen is support for microwave simulation, probably through, through another uh, kernel like Cooksator and uh, support for EBIS models for, uh, for signal integrity uh, simulations. Then the last point 
is uh, about live tuning of uh, also sources and parametric variables as we currently only support uh, RCL components. So I'm going to make a, a short demo showing a, basically I will draw a simple circuit and simulate it just to, to, to show you how it, how it looks like. And before that, well, under, under Windows, you just need to download uh, Nightly. I think the same applies to the OS X. It comes already with built-in SPI support. Under Linux, you need LibNG SPICE installed and most likely you need to compile from the sources. So here are the magical incantations to do that. Just remember to have LibNG SPICE installed. It's available on most distros as a package and uh, Remember to bid with the keycat underscore spice flag enabled. Okay, so it's time for the demo. So let's try designing something simple like a rectifier or something like this. <laughs> So most uh, SPICE components are in the PSPICE library. So let's take a voltage source. And then in order to edit its SPICE parameters, we need to go to the properties and select edit SPICE model. And here you have a user-friendly way of entering all the sorts of, uh, of uh, uh, source or, or component parameters. Uh, so let's say 5 volt sign of 1 kilohertz and then let's add a, maybe a resistor maybe another one A diode, and some capacitor for smoothing. And now, well, some values. Let's keep them more or less reasonable. and wire it all together. <coughs> of course, uh, we need to add a ground net because every simulator needs that as a reference node, otherwise it won't work. And let's annotate the schematic so that every component has a unique name. Yep. And maybe label a bit of a bunch of wires. Save current sheet as. Okay, so now in order to launch the simulation, we have our simple circuit done. Go to Tools, Simulator. And then, well, it's easy. Run and stop simulation. Well, it reminds me that I forgot to select the analysis type and uh, duration. So, yeah, we need to go to the settings. And let's try transient. So let's say 10 microseconds time step, 10 milliseconds total. Run. So no errors. 
So now let's observe uh, some signals in the circuit. For that we have either the add signals option, where you can uh, basically pick from all the nets available in the design, or we can use the probe tool. But for some reason it is all flat. <laughs> hmm. Did I do something wrong? Did you specify V1? Hmm? Did you specify V1? Yeah, I think so. Mm, and it's spice model, transient sinusoidal. Strange. Maybe I forgot to save it. So it defaulted to zero. Okay. Now it should work. So yeah, let's restart the simulation. Voila. <laughs> but the ugly thing is that I connected the diode uh, with this polarity, but there is something wrong. The plot is upside down, right? It's in the negative half. So, you know, there was a common problem with KiCad libraries uh, when the transition was done before one, b between one version of library and the other. And this changed the node mapping. So, fear not, in the SPICE model editor, we provided uh, the means for, uh, for, for overcoming such, uh, such problems and also for adapting your symbols to SPICE models, which might have arbitrary uh, terminal sequence. So here we can invert this. And this applies to all the components. So now it's as it should be. <laughs> uh, what else? So uh, I mentioned that we have live tuning of the component values. So let me show you how it works. So we can pick the screwdriver tool here and then let's say we want to see how the operation of the circuit changes as we change the capacitor value. So a slider appeared here. Let's increase the range a bit to like something like this. So as we increase the capacitance, the signal becomes flatter. Yeah, so this is not only a uh, well, a uh, nice feature, but also something that can be used in education to, for, by the teachers to, to, to show people how, uh, how the operation of the circuit changes as they mess around with the components, all in a simulation. Uh, let me show you another circuit, just uh, quickly. Okay, I think... This is not may maybe not needed. So it's basically a simple filter. So here we can also run uh, AC simulations and uh, use the tuning feature to design filters without uh, too much math. So as I change the capacitor value the transfer function also follows. And basically, that's all I wanted to show you. If there are any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, where is it? I forgot to, to mention one important thing. So this is a, a macro. This uses a macro model of an op amp, and it's quite easy to select. So to assign. So you need to edit the spice model. Go to the integrated circuit tab. Select a file <coughs> with the corresponding IC, and then. In this uh, uh, drop-down box, uh, all the models that, in the f are, that are in that file will appear, and you just select it. Model yeah, standard, standard spice model. In this case, it comes from analog devices. 
Right. Any questions? Can you still add the spike to your keys straight into the schematics? Uh, so the question was, if I can add uh, SPICE directives straight to the schematics. Yes, uh, we can. In fact, uh, we even have one here. Uh, another question as well. Is that can you export the SPICE netlist to archiving? Uh, yep, you can export a SPICE netlist from KiCad. Uh, so it's tools, generate netlist file, and here. So you can use it with uh, any external simulator. I didn't try, but uh, whatever. Uh, so the question was if I can put a white noise as the input and see the frequency response. So uh, you can do whatever the NG Spice provides. I never tried this in particular, but. implementation level, are you generating a SPICE netlist and feeding that to the simulator core as a text or are you driving the simulator with feeding it, feeding it as a sort of direct, direct uh, netlist? So the question is if we are generating a text netlist and passing it to the simulator if we are doing it in a, let's say, more binary way. So we just use text. The data is extracted uh, basically as tables in the memory, but uh, uh, netlist is parsed the normal way and passed to the simulator. Yes, but, but the thing is, uh, <coughs> it's not like you save a file and you load it somewhere. There's a, if there's a page where you try library that allows you to uh, issue the whole netlist, do you think uh, you can find it where so it's like the library? So you, can you repeat that? that? You, can you did a Python interface over the ng-spice library and then you're using the Python interface, isn't it? Uh, no, no, we don't use Python, we use the schematic and the real. Oh, okay. okay, let me repeat. So Orson, the co-author of the simulator uh, feature, uh, said that uh, we are not using files for, uh, for passing the netlists. Instead, uh, the API provided by ng-spice basically inputs a netlist as a string, as a big string, and uh, that's it. So there is no intermediate files. And now there was another question. You did a Python uh, in, uh, wrapper over the NGSpice? Whether we did a Python uh, wrapper over NGSpice? No, we did not. It's pure C++. More questions? Yep. Uh, when you tune a component, <coughs> does the program have to rerun the entire simulation? Uh, for example, if you have a very complicated circuit, do you have to expect to rerun the circuit every time you, you tweak a value? So the question is uh, if we do have to rerun the entire simulation in order to tweak a value. Uh, it depends how ng-spice handles it because uh, uh, when you change the component value I don't think it reruns the entire simulation uh, setup completely. It just reruns the transient part or okay so somebody says yes it does. But well, computers are fast these days, and for uh, for uh, AC analysis or relatively simple circuits, it works quite in real time. More questions? Yeah. Attila? Yeah. Yeah. Um, are there any plans to annotate the schematic symbols with the spice model so that you just put your schematic together and just like, okay, I let me simulate that, and I don't have to specify any spice stuff anymore, just add sources and uh, so the question is if there are any plans to annotate schematic symbols with the SPICE models. I wish there were, but I don't think the, the, there are any such plans for the moment. This heavily depends on, uh, on the library managers. Wayne, would you like to add something? Uh, just on the, the, that to topic, it kind of falls in the same scope as the classic atomic symbol where we have a fully defined part number and you know if we if people provide them then we would maybe we would add them to our library but I don't think that's something because uh, you know there's thousands of op amps we have a common op amp symbol so it's uh, you're gonna have to go find the uh, spice model and then you know add that we you know we, we it would be outside of the scope of the you know our normal libraries yep it, you know, it, you know otherwise now we have to say 
this this symbol is an eighty whatever, you know, this off amp from analog device is you repeat it every that would match up with that device model. It would just be it would be prohibitive. It would yep. be uh, expensive for us to do that in time market. Yeah, so in short, people have their own uh, library standards. Every company, every designer uses uh, calls their components in a slightly different way. So there is no uh, gold-plated solution to, to, to have, a, you know, like a single simulation library that will uh, match everybody's uh, requirements. based on the schematic to run the simulation in the command line, so on a headless system where you can just take the schematic and whatever parts of any spice code you have separately and then run it entirely on a headless system? Uh, the question was if it's possible to run the simulation from a command line on a headless system. Uh, well, you can always export a spice netlist and run ng-spice from the command line. Yeah, but then you first have to open it in KiCad, which is not able to run inside on a headless system. Uh, KiCad is a graphical application. So the question uh, was how do we communicate between the, between the simulator window and the schematic editor window, whether we have some uh, IPC protocol. Uh, there is no protocol because they both run, the, GU the GUI runs in a single thread, the simulator runs in a separate thread, and all the communication between the windows is passed through standard VX widgets uh, events. I, I yep. did want to add on that, the last the mm -hmm. question um, about running simulations. Right now, the, um, Python scripting hasn't been developed yet for the schematic editor. It's going to be in version 6. So at that point, you know, you'll be able to just create a script and tell the schematic, you know, just say, hey, here, I'll load this, load this schematic file and dump it and run it automatically. So you'd be able to do that with Python, eventually. Yep. But yeah, yeah the board, you can do all of everything with the board file now, but the schematic editor still, we haven't implemented the Python scripting in that. We haven't shrieked that out yet, so it's, but it's coming. Okay, so Wayne just mentioned that in the version 6 we will also have Python scripting support for the schematics, so this will allow any sort of uh, uh, <coughs> processing of the schematics to be done with, from within a Python script, including per, perhaps uh, simulation. Questions? Any questions? Okay, just tell Tom again.